We're going to talk about the super political compass of Tony Stark, aka Iron Man. The political compass of a character can be defined as how he behaves under the eyes of others, his actions and what he expects the world to be. Most importantly, how he acts in order for that to happen. For Tony Stark, this meant selling weapons of mass destruction to the highest bidder. He starts his path in the Marvel Cinematic Universe as a selfish billionaire playboy. It's not only after being kidnapped by terrorists when he reconsiders to turn things around and becomes a billionaire playboy willing to do anything for the good of others. It's not by outside judgment that Stark decides to wear the suit of Iron Man, but by seeing himself reflected in the horror of his actions, not because being recriminated or frowned upon. All in all, that's how he is. He's self-centered, alcoholic, and lives a very liberal lifestyle. Being a rich orphan allowed him to grow with plenty of power and a little accountability. A constant in his life was the lack of authority, and the only time he was under someone's will was in his adolescence, when he constantly argued with his father. He even struggles to have a family of his own. There are no institutions in his life. A rebel to the system, Tony Stark had little to no belief in authority. His vision of the state was that he only needed governments to sell them weapons. But with the armor comes a change of mind. Unlike other superheroes, Tony Stark understands that part of his power is his influence and decides to collaborate with the government privately to help restore the world order. He doesn't wear a mask, he wears a helmet, he is Tony Stark the billionaire playboy, that's why he doesn't hide in a second identity. I am Iron Man. Iron Man 2 starts in court, with Stark fighting for his right to execute military operations by his own will and not under the command of the US. He's effectively debating charity versus taxation. Stark considers he's far better off on his own than at the service of political interests. Later, he gets drunk and uses his iron suit to crash his own party and endangers everyone, only to be stopped by his buddy and best friend, War Machine, a law enforcement officer. This is a metaphor of how individual initiatives can, under the right conditions, corrupt and endanger the collective. Across multiple movies, including Civil War, both the comics and the movie, a running theme is the regulation of private institutions and individual accountability. The movies explore the collaboration of private institutions with public ones. Stark's character is heavily inspired by Elon Musk. Stark is a philanthropist, shaping the world for the better, not in his view, but in the views of the collective. And so he starts preserving the legacy of Howard Stark, his father, a character based in the figure of Walt Disney. But that doesn't mean that Tony will abandon his liberties. He's still rich and will never sacrifice that. Stark funds the Avengers, he provides housing, infrastructure, and research to the team. But in Civil War, he understands that he can't act without any form of regulation or government approval. He wants to be accountable of whatever happens, and little by little he acknowledges the role of authority the state has. And in his quarrel with Captain America, he understands that regulation should never obstruct the individual will. It's between these boundaries that Iron Man forges his character. All in all, Tony Stark is a progressive man that believes in clean energy, charity over taxation, and cooperation between public and private initiatives. He is the invisible hand of Adam Smith, an iron hand with a rocket launcher. Tony Stark lands as a libertarian in our super political compass. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, like and subscribe.